Hello and welcome to the Maya Tool Belt. This is Michael. So in this video, I wanted to go over a relatively simple tool from the Modeling menu set under Mesh Tools, Append to Polygon. Append to Polygon. Now the way this tool simply works is it will fill a hole on a polygonal object. To demonstrate this, I'll go to Create, Polygon Primitives, Lots of primitives here we can choose from. I'll just do a sphere, for example. And just to kind of show, I'm going to right-click and hold and choose faces as my component mode. So just select a bunch of faces and hit delete. So this essentially cuts out those faces from the sphere, leaving these large gaps. I'll right-click and hold again, go back to object mode, like so. I'm just going to hide the grid. There we go. Okay, so we have this gap. So anytime you have a gap or want to fill a gap, you can use the Append the Polygon tool to do so. That's one tool anyway, there's a many that can do such a thing. But under Edit Mesh, but under Mesh Tools, Append to Polygon. Click it. My cursor becomes like a crosshair. And what you also would notice is that the border edges, or the edges that border a hole, become thicker or bolder. And so if I were to click on any of these bolder border edges, click, the remainder of the border edges turn purple. And you also will see these small little arrowheads appear. Now the arrowheads are indicating a direction. And you'll notice that in the, my case in particular, they're going counterclockwise from right to left as the arrow is pointing along each edge. Or every time at least the surface changes a uh, changes direction, the arrow head appears indicating a direction. So this is indicating to you which order to click on an edge to fill a gap. So just for an example, I click this one first, this one that's not purple, and it's green. That indicates that's the one I've clicked on. I'll click on this one, and now you'll see like this kind of pinkish, or I don't know, what is that, salmon-colored uh, surface appears as I continue to click on edges in a sequence. And whenever I'm happy with the surface filling the hole, if I want to stop here, I can. I can press Enter. And you'll see there a new surface has been added, filling that space, appending to the polygonal surface there where I clicked. I'm going to undo that. And if I press the Y key, Y is a shortcut for redoing the last tool I used previous, in this case, append the polygon tool. And I'll click again on this edge, so let's say this one here. And once again, the little purple arrows appear. Now let's say I go opposite of the arrow direction. Let's say I go this way. Okay, so far so good. As I start to try to click this one, it doesn't let me. Nothing's happening. And hit delete to undo it and start going the other way. It'll continue to work normally as I click around, continue clicking, 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 and it works just fine. Again, delete, delete, delete to undo while I'm in the middle of the tool, hit delete to undo. Okay, until I get back to the end. When the purple goes away, that indicates that no edge is currently selected. The tool is not currently active. So the direction of those arrows is important to kind of give you a clear sense. Now you don't necessarily have to go around the border. I could click on this edge, for example, and then click straight across to that edge. And that does work. But keep in mind the surface direction. Let's say I wanted to continue and go this way. See that? That kind of twisting that's happening? That's because I'm going against the purple arrow direction that is telling me. So let me delete to undo that. If I were to go this way, then it's fine. Or even if I were to say, cut across to over here. That's not necessarily good topology, but the surface is being created and it's not twisting, like it was going against the grain, so to speak. Okay? 
So I've hit delete again. And then I hit enter, and you'll see there it completes that service, append to Polygon. So like in most of my videos, I typically will talk about the tool and how to use it. And then if you want to stick around, we'll talk more about the options of the tool. But at this point, that is the gist of how the tool works. You can fill a gap from edge to edge as long as you go with the grain and not against it uh, to create the topology that you want. Now let's look at the options. Mesh tools, append the polygon options. Again, this is a tool, so we're looking at tool settings here as opposed to uh, commands options. We can reset the tool with this button here. And you'll notice that by default, when it reset, this keep new faces planar is checked normally. I had it unchecked in my particular case, but having it checked is fine. What essentially that means is, let's say if I were to keep it checked now and click here to here, you'll notice it's, it's not actually letting me error edge not in the HCQ, the acquired plane, you should disable planar constraint. This is why I usually have it off. So now if I click it, it works just fine. And the reason why it wouldn't work is because if you kind of look at it at an oblique angle, the surface it's trying to make is not kind of what you'd call a flat surface. It's kind of twisted a little bit, which is not planar. Planar is flat. And so when it says keep new faces planar, it's actually preventing you from creating faces that are not planar. Try right here. There we go. So that worked, and that's because it is literally a flat plane from that edge to that edge. It's not a non-planar edge. That's why it worked in that particular case. So keep new faces planar. I usually keep it unchecked. It kind of makes it more flexible as far as the kinds of faces you can make. It's not limited to only keeping perfectly flat new faces. Limit the number of points is also an option here. We're going to come back to the divisions and such in a second. Limit the number of points. If I could check this box is limit points to four. Four is the default value. Four is the number of points in a four-sided face. Now one thing that's a little bit of extra information or can also be used for how pin the polygon works. I'm actually going to delete this sphere. I'll make a cube in this particular example and I'm just going to delete say this face or these two faces. That's fine. And a pin the polygon actually can be used to extend an object as well as just close up gaps. Now I can click on this edge and then click on that edge, right? Like, we, like we've been doing. But what I can also do, I can click on this edge here and then I can go out here and start adding more points. See that? Now in order to control this properly, it's best to use an orthographic view. So I say if I go out here and then go out to here. And you'll notice as soon as I let go of that fourth point of this square, it finished the surface. And I can click here, oops, click here, click here, and it finished the surface. But because it's limited to limit points to four, I don't have to hit enter to finish the surface. It just kind of completes it. Now this is mainly for making these new faces extending a surface like this. I'm going to go back to my perspective and kind of see what I've got going on here. It kind of extended off of the cube and then kind of ran along this plane like this. If I increase this number to, or even decrease, if I go up to say six, for example, I'll go back to my top view. Let's say I click uh, here, and then, again, I make sure I go in counterclockwise motion. I keep going until I hit that six point, and then it kind of stops, automatically finishes the surface, and then lets me keep going. So it kind of gives me a little bit of a uh, shortcut, in a sense. So I don't have to like keep clicking the tool or whatever to reactivate it. It knows, hey, I'm limiting this to, say, let's say four, for example. I'm limiting this to quads, and so I don't want it to go any more than four points out. But it's not necessarily counting the edges that are already on the surface. See that I had to kind of click two new edges out here, and then it kind of did the limitation there. So just kind of keep that in mind on how it works. So limit the number of points is mostly involved in extending a surface. It's not so much uh, filling up a gap. It's going to let you fill a gap regardless of what the limit is. So let's turn that off now and go back to divisions. Let me go back to my perspective view here. And I'm just going to remove all this stuff and go back to my tool here. There we go. So divisions, by default, I hit reset. And I can just uncheck this keep new faces planar option because I like it off. Uh, divisions is one. Vertices added per edge. So again, I can click here. And again, I'll go back to my top view. And I can click over here and so on. 
and I, I don't have the limit on, so it's going to keep on keep on going forever, right? Again, hit delete to undo. All right, so clicking here, and then say click here, click here, and then I can hit enter, or the Y tool, Y button, I should say. Click here, click Y, click, 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 click Y, and so on. Uh, so vertices added per edge. Let's say I change this to just to make it more drastic. I'll, I'll say five. So I'm gonna say click, and then click out here, and click out here. Notice it's adding vertices on all these edges. So all these points have been added now on each edge that this tool is creating. So typically I'll leave this at the default of one. I usually don't want to necessarily have a sequence of vertices being added, you know, willy-nilly, as they say, uh, without my really, you know, being very specific about it. But that option is there. Again, number of vertices added per edge. I have this up to five, for example, here. So that's what that does as far as divisions go. Now you'll notice here we have rotation angle and it's grayed out. And that's because what I have to do is first click on an edge and now it shows up. Let's say I click over here and if I increase or decrease this angle, let me go back to the perspective view. Here we go. So you can see these points I've added and I can play with the angle after the face has been kind of Add it. Hit that delete key to get rid of that last little point there. But you can see there I can play with the ang rotation angle of the appended face coming off of that edge after the fact. And this, so this only becomes ungrayed out after you've placed that initial point to create this kind of pink surface and then you can play with this rotation angle. Okay, and then hit enter. Boom, there we go. Okay. So that rotation angle stays grayed out until the tool is in is active and is happening. And then last, we have texture space. Now texturing is a whole concept on its own, okay? But the default is to normalize scale to fit. So let's see, let's look at the texture view here. Okay, so all these different uh, faces that I've been adding have been being added to the UV editor over here. You can see this all set to, this was all set to uh, normalize, scale to fit. So each one of these faces, if I select each face one at a time, you can see the highlighted over there, is scaled up to fit this UV space. And again, this is talking about UVs and textures, which this video is not really focused on. But if you know anything about UVs, you can kind of see what's happening as I go through each one. Each face that I've, been, I've added with the append the polygon tool has scaled that UV space up to fit within this quadrant of the UV editor. So let's try using unitize. I'm actually going to delete these faces I have here just so we can get rid of those. And just to make this you know kind of easy, I'm going to remap these faces with like an automatic unwrap like this and delete history, freeze transformations, and so on. So each face of this cube now you can see here are these individual squares in the UV editor. So now I'm going to go back to append the polygon, which I have a button on my shelf for, and with unitize. So before we had normalize, and just to show you what that looks like again one more time, I'll click here and make a new face, hit enter, and that new face is scaled up in the UV editor to fit this quadrant of the UV editor. Okay. So now I'll choose unitize. So now I'll do the same thing. I'll click on this edge over here, over here, and then hit enter. And now you'll see that face. So this one, you'll notice, if you look at the shape of it, it's kind of the same shape as the face as I drew it here in the space here. It's kind of this uh, trapezoid. There we go, trapezoid. Now this one is also not a perfect square. However, you'll notice that the, the UVs that it made are is a perfect square. It has been unitized, used corners and boundary. So it's like using the corners and the boundary of the face I'm drawing and filling this UV quadrant over here. And lastly, we have none. I can click, 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 and hit enter. And if I click on this face, you'll notice that it has no UVs at all. I would have to add UVs myself. Okay, so if I were to turn on the checkerboard here. So this checkerboard pattern you can kind of see is uh, visible on all these faces, except this one. This one's just black. That checkerboard's not visible at all because 
I had the UV set to the texture space set to none. So it did not create any texture space. I would have to go back afterwards and add that texture space myself. So when it comes to using this tool, the pen and polygon tool, the way that I use it primarily, like 99% of the time, we'll close all this stuff, is to fill gaps. Like I'll usually, you know, if I'm trying to fill a hole or something and using the fill hole command is not good enough, I will go in here and I'll reset this, turn off keep new faces planar. So I'll have everything default except for keep new faces planar. I'll turn off and I'll just simply fill the gap the way I want to and be done with it. That's usually the, like I said, 99% of the time. That's what I'll do with append to polygon. But, you know, these other options, it's good to know what they do, especially when it comes to the texture space. Like if you're, if you care about that at all, or adding divisions, if you know you need, you know, your, this new face you're appending onto your object to, you know, have a certain number of divisions in it, or even rotation angle, that could be useful. You know, it's a lot of times, and this is something that I might want, want to use more often than I do, is because a lot of times I'll just add the face, and then if I need to rotate it later, I'll do it manually. This might be a nice little shortcut to uh, doing that. So in any case, append to polygon tool. This is a really handy tool. I use it all the time. I'm so actually surprised I didn't have a video on it already. Uh, maybe I do, and maybe I'm just remaking it. <laughs> But anyway, a pen to polygon tool. Hopefully you uh, got something out of this video. Again, if you have any requests for topics to go over as I kind of am in the process of here in 2022, kind of kickstarting my YouTube channel back up, uh, definitely leave a comment below, like and subscribe and all that kind of good stuff. And I hope to see you back here in the future. Bye-bye.